This is going to be a study about another Jehovah's Witnesses. You see, me and you, as Bible believers, we are Jehovah's Witnesses. We witness for Jehovah. We witness for the Lord. But there's a group out there called the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they got a completely different Jehovah than we got. They ain't got the same God. And that's why I call them another Jehovah's Witnesses. Just like the Bible talks about another Jesus. They've got another Jesus. But the founder of this cult is Charles Taze Russell, who lived from February 16th, 1852 to October 31st, 1916. And after his death, a man named Joseph Franklin Rutherford began making changes to the group. And he made it even worse than it already was. And they meet in Kingdom Halls. If you drive by a building and it says Kingdom Hall, that's where the Jehovah's Witnesses meet. And they don't call it a church building. You know, they don't do things in there that you, you do in your normal church building. And they get their name from Isaiah 43.10, which says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my ser servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. That's where they get their name. And this group are big on reaching the masses, which would be a good thing if they didn't have such a false, heretical gospel and teachings. But in 2014... This is what I read somewhere. In 2014, the Jehovah's Witnesses reported that nearly 20 million members, they have nearly 20 million members in over 113,000 congregations worldwide. Every month, the Jehovah's Witnesses conduct 9.2 million home Bible studies. Every day, hundreds of thousands of copies of their two magazines, Watchtower and Awake, are printed and distributed in nearly 200 languages. That's what I read. I got that out of a, a book about the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I mean, it may be more now, it may be a little bit less, but that's a lot of people that they're reaching. And I believe their biggest problem, where all their problems stem from, is they have the wrong authority. You see, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses can give the people increased light that can even change their former beliefs and change the Bible itself. You see, me and you as Bible believers, what we believe, what we got from the Bible, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, our different interpretations about little things and stuff, but me and you, what we believe about the Bible, the fundamentals of, of the faith for us, are the same when we got saved, and it'll be the same for us the day we die. You know, it doesn't change. We don't believe somebody can just come up out of nowhere and say, we no longer believe in eternal security. We now believe in something else. Or we no longer believe in the Trinity. We believe in something else. You know, nothing's going to change. No person can come and say they got increased light, and it's really this. Now, I'm not talking about minor little details. I'm talking about, you know, the, the fundamentals to our faith. The things that are clear that we know aren't going to change. Nobody's going to come up and say, you know, they've got increased light that nobody else has got and change it. But see, the fact that they say that, it goes against the Bible itself. In Proverbs 30 and verse 6, it says, Add thou not unto his words lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. In Revelation twenty two eighteen it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the uh, prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So they add to the word. They take from the word. Their biggest problem is they've got the wrong authority. Their authority is not in the Bible. They even have their own Bible called the New World Translation. And it's a mess. 
but the order of their authority goes the governing body, branch committees, traveling overseers, bodies of elders, congregations, and then the individual publishers, the people who personally put out the literature. And the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, commonly called the Jehovah's Witnesses, is an international religious organization based in Brooklyn, New York. And overseeing the Watchtower Society is the governing body, a group of men known as the Faithful and Discreet Slave. And Jehovah's Witnesses claim their authority comes from the Bible, and they can say that all they want. But what they believe is the Bible can only be properly interpreted and applied with the help of publications prepared by the faithful and discreet slave. That's that group of men overseeing the Watchtower Society. Uh, and that's the wrong authority. And the Bible says in Matthew 15, 9, But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's exactly what they're doing. They've got men who have absolutely no idea what they're doing telling them what to do and what to think and what to believe. But I'm going to give you some things, just some quick things to show you that this is a group you need to steer clear of. The first thing is they deny the Godhead. And, you know, they don't believe, you know, Jesus is God. They don't believe that God is three and one and one and three. Even though the Bible says in 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. They don't believe in the Godhead. Because they another thing they believe, they believe Jesus was created by Jehovah as a spirit creature named Michael the Archangel. And that's wrong. Because in Colossians 1, 15 through 16, you'll see that Michael is created by Jesus Christ himself. It says in Colossians 1, 15 and 16, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Michael was created by the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Michael is not the Lord Jesus. They teach that Jesus isn't God. Wrong again. Because the Father even calls Jesus God himself. In Hebrews 1, 8, it's in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's the Father saying to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. In 1 John 2, 23, it says, Whosoever denieth the Son, which that's exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses do, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So they deny the Son, and they don't even have the Father. They don't even have Jehovah. They got another Jehovah. They're another Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not witnessing for our Jehovah. They got the wrong rock. In John 5, 23, it says that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. They don't honor the Son. In 2 John 1, 7, it says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. They don't believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh and that he is come in the flesh. They are the deceivers and they are antichrist and antichrist. Another thing they teach is that Jesus only became the son of God at his baptism. But if you look at Matthew 123, <clears throat> they were to call Jesus Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So, he was God at his birth as well. He was God before his birth. He was always God. His name even means God with us. Jesus means Jehovah saves. 
And in Matthew 2, 11, the wise men worship Jesus. Why? Because he's God. At his birth, they were worshiping him as a little child. When they came in there in Matthew 2, 11, and he was a, a little child that they were worshiping him. The people, he had people worshiping him at his birth as well that knew he was the Son of God. And Luke 1, 35 and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So he was already called the Son of God at his birth. And by calling him the Son of God, you make him equal with God. Another thing they believe that since he's not God, Jesus must not be worshipped or prayed to. Yet you see him accepting worship right there in the Gospels from people. He didn't turn the worship down. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You do pray to him. He's your mediator. Another thing they teach is that Jesus only died for the sins of Adam. That's wrong again. In 1 Timothy 2, 6, it says, Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In 1 John 2, 2, it says, He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. They teach he didn't die on a cross, but actually died on a torture stake. But in Philippians 2, 8, it says, And being found in fashion as a man... He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Colossians 1.20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross. In Colossians 2.14 it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Hebrews 12.2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. No, he died on a cross. Another thing they believe is that Jesus was raised from the dead as a spirit creature and his body disappeared. But that's not so. Because in Luke 24, 39, he says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. He had a bodily resurrection. In John twenty twenty seven through 28, it says, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. So Thomas felt the body that had resurrected and called Jesus Lord and God. He wouldn't have been a very good Jehovah's Witness. The Jehovah's Witnesses have, believe they have replaced Israel and the 144,000. But in Revelation 14, 3 and 4, you'll see that the 144,000 don't actually even show up until the tribulation. And the 144,000 are made up of male Jewish virgins. That would knock out most of the Jehovah's Witnesses right there. They are all male. The 144,000 are all male. They're all Jewish and they're all virgins. Now, how many of the Jehovah's Witnesses in your town are male Jewish virgins? Not many. They don't believe there's a such thing as an immortal soul. Now, that's not true. They, uh, they teach that because they don't want you to think that somebody who dies and is not one of the 144,000 is going to burn forever. Or someone who dies that's not saved is going to burn forever. And so they don't believe that the soul is immortal. Because they don't believe that Jehovah would ever punish people for eternity. So they teach that there's no such place as hell or the lake of fire. But a soul will burn forever if he doesn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your savior and you die you will burn forever your soul is immortal it will go on and on forever in hell and never burn up 
For example, in Revelation 20 and verse 10, it says, And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You see, this takes place after the millennium. And the beast and the false prophet's already been in the lake of fire for a little over a thousand years at this point. So the... And it says where the beast and the false prophet are. They're still there when the devil is cast in. But you see, the Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jehovah would ever punish people for eternity. They teach there's no such place as hell or the lake of fire in the Bible. When Jesus himself said in Matthew 18, 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, Cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. If hell is just the grave, then what does it matter? What does any of that matter if hell is just the grave? But they believe in this thing called soul sleep that when you die, your soul is just asleep. It's not in heaven or hell. And they get that from Ecclesiastes 9, 5 through 6, which says, For the living know not that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Or for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for their memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. But, but you see where it says the dead know not anything. So they take that and they say, see, well, when you're dead, you don't know what's going on. Your soul's asleep. You're not either in heaven or in hell being burned. You see, but that's, you see, Ecclesiastes has to do with things under the sun. That's what Solomon is, that's the context of how he's writing is how he sees things that are done under the sun. He's not really taking eternal things into account. But they want to interpret such clear verses out of Matthew, out of 1 Corinthians, where Paul's called up to the third heaven, or where Paul says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. All these clear verses, they want to override those clear verses with verses from Ecclesiastes, which has to do with things under the sun. But another thing they believe is after their resurrection, the unsaved dead will get a second chance to be saved and live forever in a paradise on earth. So they teach that there is a second chance after death. That's wrong. I mean, the rich man in Luke 16 didn't even ask for a second chance. He asked for somebody to go to his five brethren. In Luke 16, 28, he said, For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. You can see he knew he didn't have a second chance. Um, but he wanted somebody to go to the people who were still alive. You see, as long as there's breath, there's hope. But once you die, there's no more hope. You go to hell, that's it. There's no second chance after you die. Another thing they, that Jehovah's Witnesses believe is that God exercises selective foreknowledge. So therefore, he chose not to know that Adam and Eve would sin. Because in their mind, God wouldn't be just and a holy God if he made Adam and Eve knowing that they would sin. But he did know they would sin. Because in Titus 1-2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised, before the world began. It was already in the Lord's mind how people would get eternal life before the world even began. In Isaiah 46.10 it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall not stand and I will do all my pleasure. My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. You, you see, he knows the end from the beginning. He's not doing selective foreknowledge. I mean, that's another God 
that they're talking about. Another thing they teach is salvation depends upon works and being faithful and obedient to the end. So they're going against clear Pauline teachings saying that salvation has to do with works and enduring to the end. But in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Clearly, this most of this stuff is just basic elementary stuff like you would learn in Sunday school that they are getting twisted. Another thing that they say is there is no salvation apart from membership in the Jehovah's Witnesses organization. The true mark of a cult. Just like the Church of Christ, maybe not all of them, but most of them believe you're lost unless you are baptized, water baptized by a Church of Christ elder. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach there is no salvation apart from membership in the Jehovah's Witnesses organization. I Meaning if you're just not a, even you're not a Jehovah's Witnesses, you're you're lost. There's no salvation. Which wouldn't be a big deal to them because they don't believe you're going to hell. In John fourteen six it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. You come through him. It has nothing to do with a denomination, an organization, any type of local church on this earth. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and coming through him. In Acts 4.12 it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none under name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. All these characters in the Bible, like Paul, Peter, Cornelius, the Ethiopian eunuch, the thief on the cross, the Apostle John, John the Baptist, would all be in hell if you have to be a Jehovah's Witness because none of them are one. Another thing they teach is that there is no assurance of salvation even for those with a heavenly hope. That's not true. In 1 John 5.13, he says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know that you have eternal life. You can have assurance of salvation. Paul said in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He knows who, who he's believed in, and he's fully persuaded of all that he's been told and of the right doctrines. The Jehovah's Witnesses forbid their members from getting blood transfusions. That's another thing they believe. They do not believe in blood transfusions, and, you know, that's not that big of a deal, I guess. But they don't believe in that because of Acts 15, 29, that says that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. But that has nothing to do with getting a blood transfusion. This is talking about eating blood, not getting a blood transfusion. They also t have other strange teachings like they teach against holidays and birthdays, which that's fine, but you can't just say that somebody's just sinning by observing a certain day. You know, we got liberty to observe a certain day if we want to. You know, if somebody wants to celebrate the birth of Jesus, it's not wrong. It doesn't matter who did it in the past. If somebody wants to celebrate a certain day, as long as they're not celebrating something, you know, sinful or something, then it's not sinful. If somebody wants to have a to celebrate somebody's birthday, you know, you ain't gonna find you know, God telling you to celebrate birthdays in the Bible, but it's not wrong for you to tell celebrate your birthday. And the Bible says in Colossians 2.16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. It said, Let no man judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day. You know, it's to each their own. 
we're at liberty to observe certain days if we want to. And like like Paul said, he said, he said, one man esteemeth one day above another, another man esteemeth every day alike, but let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. But I mean, this Jehovah's Witness, this cult, it's a, it's a bad cult. I mean, anybody with just a little bit of Bible knowledge could easily debunk these people. It's not really something that's hard to debunk or expose. I mean, they have to be getting people who just have no idea about the Bible. You know, whereas, you know, somebody like maybe Church of Christ could get somebody that knows something about the Bible. Or, you know, a hyper-dispensationalist could trick somebody or a Calvinist could trick somebody. But, I mean, if you just know a little bit about the Bible, you're not going to be tricked by the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's just basic stuff that they twist around. And it's it's a dangerous cult, I believe, because, they, I mean, they have such a big outreach that they do. They're trying to reach the masses with the false with their false gospel. I mean, I've had tons of them come to my door. But this is just a little manual here. Maybe you could write down some notes and make your own little manual to go against the Jehovah's Witnesses if they come to your door.